Apple Calendar is a free calendar app from Apple for tracking your events. It's ideal if you want to stay in the Apple ecosystem because it's only available on Apple devices. Hi guys, it's Uncle Dan, back again with Paperless X. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos. The iPad and Mac versions of the app have four views. The day, week, month, and year. You can easily switch to any view you need. We love that these are readily accessible at the top of the app. On either device, the week view clearly shows all your events of the week. It is the perfect view for creating and viewing your schedule. You can see the days of the week, the time, and blocks for your schedule. It is easy to know the duration of your events at a glance. As you scroll through your week, Apple Calendar also demarcates different weeks. It's subtle but visible. The day view is especially confusing on the iPad. The big blocks stretch to other dates, which is just unpleasant. It is better to use this view on the Mac, where you only see the information for that one day you want to see. You can also navigate through different days of the month. The small calendar on the top helps. Your events on the month view are tiny and don't have much color. For an overview of what your month looks like, this view helps, but it probably won't be the main view you use to plan your work. We love the fact that it has continuous vertical scrolling instead of paged horizontal scrolling. Nothing much happens on your yearly view, especially on the iPad. You don't even know which dates have events and which ones don't. The user interface on the iPhone is very different from what you get on the iPad and the Mac. Starting from the useless year view, you go to the month view, which has dots below to show the days with events. You can either view two months or one month at a time. The single month is better because it can show you events scheduled on different dates. However, we would rather see all the plans for the month since this is the month view. Tapping one day at a time is tiring. From the two-month view, you can go to the day view. This is probably our favorite view on the iPhone. It has everything you would expect to find on a daily view. You have your days of the week for quickly checking daily schedules for different dates. You could think of this as a minute weekly view. It makes sense to use your phone in portrait mode, especially when viewing your calendar to quickly check your schedule. It also makes sense that the iPhone supports the week view only when in landscape mode because there simply isn't enough space for it in portrait mode. What doesn't make sense however is rotating your iPhone to actually use the week view on the iPhone. Do any of you guys use the week view on the iPhone to plan your work or should Apple consider removing it altogether? Let us know. On any device you pick up, creating a new event is easy. On the iPad, long pressing empty spaces is an even faster way to add new events. The app can auto fill some important details for your event. You can then drag to adjust the duration of your event or move it to a different date altogether. This works on your Mac too. You can also add traveling time for your events. It's important for events that are a bit far from where you live. For all day events, dragging to cover all 24 hours of the day is not very practical. It makes sense that you mark an all day event with a single tap. Once you are happy with the time and date, you can name your event, add a location or FaceTime video call link. Apple Calendar supports recurring events, as is to be expected of any calendar app in 2022. 
your event can repeat every day, week, month, or year. And all those options are for very simple events, which might not work all the time. You can customize how frequently your events repeat. We were impressed by Google Calendar's 1 to 99 range for your repeating events. In Apple Calendar, that range is 1 to 999 of whatever repeat you choose. Even 999 months is ridiculous. Do any of you guys have plans that far off in the future? On macOS, you get the range of 1 to 100, which is much more reasonable. It's also easy to type your number than the scrolling option you have on the iPad. You can decide the exact months and days your event repeats, which we love. You can then pick a date when your repeat ends. That is the only option you get on the iPad and iPhone. On the Mac, you can end your repeat after a certain number of occurrences. It helps to use the app on different devices as Apple limits some features to one device. Apple Calendar can schedule multiple events for the same time and date. The app should warn users when you create an event for a time slot that's already busy. Imagine scheduling your doctor's appointment at the same time you are having a meeting with your CEO. In Apple Calendar, you can create different calendars for different aspects of your life, for work, personal, or travel. For every event you create, you can save it to the calendar it belongs to, which is useful when sharing your calendars with other people. Apple Calendar can invite people to your events. What's an event if you can't share the experience with others? Alerts in Apple Calendar make sure you don't have any excuses for missing important events. For an all-day event, you can set alerts to be reminded about it on the day a day, or two days before at 9 a.m. On the Mac, you can customize these days and times, which you can't on the iPad version. If your event includes travel time, the alert comes before that. You definitely won't be missing any events. In case you have a tendency of missing the first alert, you can set a second one. If that's still not enough, you can set a third, fourth, or even tenth alert on macOS. You can also set an alert after the event. More alerts are always welcome. You can add attachments to events, PDFs, audio files, videos, etc. This can be from anywhere, your iPad, iCloud, or even third-party cloud services. We managed to add more than 10 files on the iPad. It was a bit tiring adding them one by one. The macOS version does that much faster. It adds multiple attachments at a time. You can add a URL and notes to an event. You can't format your notes though, but it's acceptable for a calendar app. You can create new events from other apps. In Apple Notes, Data detection allows you to add events to Apple Calendar directly from your notes, as though you were in the Calendar app. You can do the same in other apps like mail, messages, etc. At any time, you can choose to display information from specific calendars by selecting or deselecting them. The Birthdays Calendar displays your contacts' birthdays. Tapping on their names shows you their information without leaving Apple Calendar. You can name a new calendar and choose the color for it. You can use a custom color if you are unhappy with the default options. You can also choose to share it with someone. It simplifies planning and scheduling family and work events. You can also allow alerts to be displayed. You can make your calendar public and share the link with anyone to subscribe 
for a read-only version of your calendar. Everyone can see your plans without editing them. On the Mac, you can merge calendars to copy all events to one calendar. You can add multiple accounts in Apple Calendar to see all your information in one place. The different colors for your calendars indicate different calendars. For example, all my Google Calendar events are green. This makes it easy to differentiate my calendars. People can invite you to their events and calendars. You can either accept, decline, or be unsure of event invitations. You can also decline or join calendars you are invited to. Should you change your mind about an event, you can easily change the response from your inbox. Apple Calendar makes it easy to differentiate events you have marked as maybe and those you declined. You can set your calendars for titles, invitees, location, and notes for the events. Tapping on a result pops up the event, which you can either edit or delete. When you click an event on the Mac, it takes you there. Apple Calendar has six widgets, four for upcoming events, one for the monthly calendar, and another listing your events. You can view your events without opening the calendar app and also choose the calendars you want displayed on your widgets. You also have an option to hide all day events. On the Mac, you can see similar widgets. You don't get the massive ones as you do on the iPad. Apple Calendar is everything you need to track your meetings and schedule your time. It syncs across all your Apple devices and integrates with other Apple apps for a powerful workflow. It's free and packs features that most of us need. What calendar app do you prefer using? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.